This episode is made possible by Armoire. Armoire makes getting dressed easy. With a clothing rental membership from Armoire, build the perfect wardrobe with brands that are high quality, unique, and recommended just for you. All you have to do is take a five-minute style quiz and select items from your dynamic, personalized closet. The styles show up at your door in as little as two days. Then when you're ready for new clothes, just swap them out. Listen, I live in Southern California. There is absolutely no need for puffer coats or any sort of those winter jackets. But when I travel anywhere else in the world in these cold months, I'm often burdened with the task of getting winter clothes. And now with Armoire, I can just rent my winter wardrobe. It's brilliant. Right now, our listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to $125 off. Just visit armoire.style slash datable. That is armoire.style, spelled A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E to get up to 50% off your first month and never worry about what to wear again. Try Armoire today. The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. I'm your host, Yue Shu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host, Julie Kraftchik. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. We are excited you've joined us for an older episode. While our earlier seasons were all about dating in San Francisco, we quickly realized all the themes and learnings are universal for all daters. So we shifted to covering dating from all around the world as the seasons progress. The fun part is things happen first in San Francisco, the tech epicenter and counterculture capital of the world. We love for you to keep tuning in to our older episodes, but there is no set order to listen in. So feel free to jump to more recent seasons or relevant episodes for you. Enjoy the show. I was so excited to get my shipment from Last Bottle Wines in the mail the other day full of incredible red wines all from Napa Valley. I love wine tasting, so having this to my door couldn't be happier. Also couldn't be more excited that today's episode is brought to you by Last Bottle Wines. If you don't know already, they're a Napa-based online wine shop with a twist. They offer just one hand-picked wine per day until it sells out, and they're always at incredible prices. We're talking talking 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part is that there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase. And I could not be more excited to bring this offer right now because they're having a marathon sale, which is coming up March 28th and 29th. Even better, we're offering Datable listeners 10% off your first order with code Datable. So if you are a wine lover like me, this is a great time to join. And did I mention that shipping is 100% free? So so what are you waiting for? Mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th or get on it earlier if you want. You can sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use code DATABLE and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. The Datable podcast is hosted by me, I'm Yue, a former dating coach in New York turned active dater in San Francisco. On each episode, you'll hear commentary by my co-host, Michael Vargas, a fellow dating coach with a clinical psychology background, my producer, Julie Kraftchik, and other surprise co-hosts. Stay tuned until the end of the episode for a fun dating fact presented by our partner, Lively, a new dating app that uses videos to tell your story. By the way, we started a t-shirt line, and we're pretty sure these t-shirts will make killer presents for the holidays. So check it out on our website at datablepodcast.com. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Datable, a show that opens up a candid conversation about dating in San Francisco. And on each episode, we dissect a dating story. And today we have Andrew. Andrew, are you there? Yes, I am. All right, Andrew, tell us your story. Um, well, I've been living in San Francisco for almost a decade, grew up in the Bay Area, and, you know, dating has always been a very interesting, weird affair, um, and, you know, like everybody else in the city, I tend to be very busy. I've gone on more dating app dates than I can count, and it's always just been a very interesting, yet usually short-lived experience. Uh, in one instance... I was on a date, and in the middle of the date, the woman in question 
looks up at me and stops me and says, sorry, this isn't going to work out. And when I asked oh. why, yeah. And, you know, we had a lot in common. We did a lot of the same stuff. We were interested in the same things. And I thought the date was going fairly well. We were laughing at each other's jokes. You know, great rapport. But she, the, her reasoning was, and I quote, we know too many of the same people. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, she's in is a very tight knit community, like a performing community, so everybody knows everybody. Uh, and she was just kind of looking to go outside of that. Andrew, I can totally relate to this. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because this is why I don't. I try to date as little as possible in San Francisco. Not only do you have these little communities that are so tight and everybody knows everyone, but San Francisco in general is just very small, and everyone knows everyone. Everyone's dated everyone, so it is kind of. I'm, I, for lack of better words, it's kind of yucky <laughs> to date someone who you have so many mutual friends with. So is there more to this story, Andrew? I mean, you know, again, we still know the same people and we still chat and we're kind of friendly and we hang out once in a while. But it's but it was just a disappointing aspect. So I'm a little perplexed because your story seems to be kind of a normal story. I mean, I, I think that this happens to a lot of people. I've heard of it happening. But the fact that you, you've chosen to tell this story on our podcast obviously means that it bothers you. So let's talk about why this bothers you so much. In the eight years, or sorry, nine years that I've been living in this city, I've, as I mentioned earlier, I've been on a lot of different dates. And you know, I'm not sure if it's just the city or if it's our culture or if it's the technology that we have available or if it's the way that we were brought up, but it just seems that dating in the city is incredibly hard. And this excuse to kind of break things off or not even explore it, almost like a, well, this is the last, you know, I, I, that's it, I'm throwing in the towel. Um, I've kind of experienced it all. I've been ghosted. At one point, I uh, got stalked. At one point, a lot of it almost feels like, and I've heard this from other friends as well, that, that you know, you, it's all or nothing, like hell yes or hell no situation. You know what I mean? It seems like you have, like, a date or a few minutes within the date at this point to even be able to, Feel, you know, feel the other person out. Back in the day, people date people they get to know over time. So those feelings and that attraction is developed over FaceTime, not not FaceTime from <laughs> iPhone, but you know, from like actual <laughs> FaceTime. But nowadays, we feel like we must feel something in that first date or in that first five minutes. And if we don't feel it, we must swipe for this person or delete or, you know, throw away this person. So I yeah. guess the question is, this is obviously something that's affected by dating apps. It's, it's creating this kind of behavior where we can swipe people even in person. But two, it's like, this is a great way to filter for people who do think this way, right? I, it, this is obviously a girl who made her judgment very quickly. Whether that's a valid excuse or not, who cares? Because she's obviously not interested. So she made her, her judgment very quickly. This is not someone you want to be with anyway. She wasn't going to put in the time to get to know you. So, hey, whatever. She can go swipe the next guy. But obviously, she's not right for you. So, uh, Andrew, I've also lived here for six years. So not as long as you, but up there in the scheme of San Francisco. I was wondering what your thoughts are of how San Francisco dating has changed in the last few years since apps have become more mainstream. I will say there's way more poly people out there, um, and they're way more open about it, uh, which is very interesting for someone who got introduced to that concept while living in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. While I've been living here, it's changed quite a bit from the perspective of, hey, that's something that's very interesting that you're interested in. It's not my thing, but it's very cool that you're interested in it, to we have to, you have to meet these very specific specifications. Mm -hmm. It's almost like ordering a, a computer. Oh, your modem's not what I'm looking for? Well, sorry, I'm going to try to find the next model. Well, there's the Thrillist article. I don't know if you read that. And I do think it's overtly negative, so I'm a little negative on the article. But there was a line from it that people felt like in SF, everyone was looking for the next hot app. And it was like how they were felt with dating. And it was like, 
we're going to beta test you, move on to the next thing that's out there. So I thought that was an interesting analogy that kind of just said what you did. No, that's 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 perfect. That's exactly what I what's been rolling around my head, and I haven't really been able to. I didn't haven't read that, but I haven't been able to put it into words. One woman um, that I was uh, that I went on a date with. Basically, we met up, and when I I had to go up and go to the restroom, and when I came back, she wanted to end the date. And again, this is this is when. Uh, at a moment when it seemed really nice, we had a good rapport, you know, she was funny and I apparently thought that my, you know, complete memorization of The Princess Bride was a pretty redeeming quality, but she wanted to end it. So it ended up, so when I asked her what's up, she said that she had Googled me while I was away and I, <laughs> yeah, I am a bit of a Bernie supporter. I'm not like a Bernie bro when I don't like attack. Wait, <laughs> what? Yeah. So she had found a couple of tweets where I had, you know, retweeted some issues about Bernie uh, and some support for Bernie, and she was like, yeah, I'm a Hillary supporter. This will never work. Wait, she did all of this while you were in the bathroom? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard of this happening a lot more is maybe not during the bathroom break, but <laughs> of, of people Googling and, and checking people's LinkedIn and Facebook before they go out on dates. Is that something that you've ever... Oh, doing I do a done? full background check. I have like a membership at this background check company. I mean, I do a full background check because I keep hearing nightmare stories of girls going on dates with guys who are like convicted felons or had like written um, really controversial articles about women in the past. You know, like I just don't want to get, I don't want to waste my time with people like that. And with online dating, you have no idea what you're going to get. So I do, I actually do my homework but at the same time, to a fault, because I do think I know a little bit too much about that person when I go and yeah. go on this date. It's super awkward when you're like, oh, I know where you went on your family vacation. But yeah. But never actually talked about it. It's that. super <laughs> awkward when I know their ex-girlfriend through all my research and I'm like, oh, I just want to bring up her name right now, but I can't. So wait, do you, so do you feel like that's actually, do you think it's benefiting or harming dating? I think it's like good to do a criminal records check, maybe, <laughs> but I don't think you need to go through someone's full LinkedIn and yeah. Facebook and Instagram um, to get to know them. Like I actually think on Tinder, when someone links their Instagram, I automatically swipe left for them. That's just TMI. I don't need to know that much information. I like a little mystery to your this person that I'm about to meet. But I do think that in in this, you know, this is going back to your point, Andrew, about, you know, like the influx of dating apps and how people keep thinking like about the next hot thing or the next best thing. This is like across the country. Okay. This is not just San Francisco. It's just in San Francisco, we feel, we feel like it's more amplified one because the community is smaller and two tech is here. But yeah. I think that the thing we need to think about is it's not so much the, these apps, it's the access that we have to information. We just always have so much information that we think that when we meet someone, we already have enough information about them to judge them. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, there was mystery. There was a, like getting to know each other process. And I almost feel like that phase of getting to know each other is a little bit obsolete now. And yeah. with that too, it's like you're learning about someone through content, but you're not learning their context. Yep. No, not at all. Exactly. The, the good news is, okay, Everyone who has been on this podcast, I can guarantee you, is in the same boat. Everyone feels that this is something that's happening and that they're fighting it. They don't, they don't want to date people who have already fallen into that black hole. So there's still a lot of us out there. We just need to find each other. Maybe we should start a support group or something. To me, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use apps because you're just rolling the dice. It's a real roll of the dice, but when you're out there meeting people, you, you get that experience with them, and you know we have those moments of when we first meet someone in the first five minutes, whether we want to talk to them or not further on. But right. with online, it's just really a roll of the, the, the dice. We take away from the fact of that first actual experience of how important that is to make a deciding factor of what we can do with it for the future. Do we want to continue it on or not? In mm -hmm. online, you don't have any a choice like that. All you have is a little bit of words that they typed up that you can't really judge what it really means. 
But it might not be a bad thing, right? Like online, there's a lot of benefits. You're opening up to people you wouldn't have met in the in the first place. I think you just have to have a different mindset about it, that you have to expect that you're going to go on tons of first, second, third dates that may never go anywhere. And you're almost the first date isn't really even a date. It's just like a meet. I feel like, okay, so I'm going to completely disagree with this. I actually think that we should change our mindset and start vetting the people we go on dates with more. Like we should, our goal shouldn't be going on so many first and second dates thinking that some of them may not go anywhere. Like I always bring up my girlfriend in New York. I hope she listens to this. She's had over like thousands of matches on Tinder. She goes on like two or three dates a day. And at some point it becomes a job. It's a meet and greet and it's not real anymore. This is why I think we just got to vet better, choose better, know better what what you're looking for. And the person you go on a date with, that person's going to hold a lot more weight than you just going, oh, th this is a numbers game. So I really like, I know some people don't like this. I like talking on the phone before we meet. Yep. I like FaceTiming before I, we meet. I like that because then you get a sense of who that person is. And I feel like we're neglecting Andrew for a little bit. Andrew, I really think before you throw in the towel, because I'm very passionate about this, there is someone out there for you. But before you throw in the towel, just change your mindset and change your methodology. I really think, I mean, look at us. There's like four of us right now in the same boat. You're going to find other people who are also in the same boat. I appreciate it. I'm not saying that, like, I give up hope because, you know, I didn't throw in the towel. I'm still, you know, going out there and hanging out. Um, one question, though. You mentioned talking on the phone, mm -hmm. and I, too, have noticed that a lot of people just really are uncomfortable with talking on the phone. Absolutely. It's so funny. When I moved to San Francisco, to me, I think it's a it was a little bit of a San Francisco thing because... Uh, when I moved here, I asked, I kept asking people for their number, like just people I wanted to meet when I started meeting people, and I kept getting weird looks, and I asked a buddy of mine what, the, what that's about, and he's like, dude, no one talks on the phone anymore. I was like, what? Since when does that happen? But it, I, I agree, people are more reluctant to give up a cell phone number and to talk. Yes, definitely, but for the people who are willing to talk on the phone, they deserve your time and you deserve to give them more of your time as well. I think because we're also a little bit uncomfortable on the phone, having that first step being a phone call definitely filters out the people you don't want to be with. Just a thought, I don't know. I mean, I have a lot of girlfriends who are like, I would never do it. But honestly, if they like the guy enough or think they like the guy enough or they think there's a potential there, they'll get on the phone with him. That might be a good way to like UA was saying earlier to vet. If the person's not willing to talk on the phone, then maybe this might not be someone that you want to kind of look further into. Yeah, I, the first thing that popped into mind was like, you know, you're willing to meet with somebody and be possibly incredibly awkward for half hour to multiple hours, but you're not willing to just chat on the phone, which is A, safer, and B, you can end it whenever the hell you want. Oh, yeah. I remember back in the day, the rejection hotline. Do you, does anyone remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, explain, if, wait, explain it for time. the kids who don't know who, what that is. Okay, so back in the day, we, there was a number that you can give out. And if someone, if someone asked you for your number and you felt uncomfortable about giving your number, you can give them what's called the rejection hotline number. And it's basically when they call that number, it lets the person know that that's actually not the person's real number and that they have been rejected. Well, there, there was actually multiple of them. There was the nice rejection. There was the swearing rejection. There was a couple. Uh, <laughs> A friend of mine actually uh, actually used to use that all the time, and she had multiple ones depending on what how aggressive the dude was, or uh, whether or not she like wanted to let him down easy. And I think it, I even think there was like a celebrity one with like uh, <laughs> Patrick Duffy or somebody like that. They should do that for texting now or something. Oh man, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad. I don't want to get a rejection text. No, uh, no, that's horrible. I would cry. Like, if, at least with a rejection phone call, you hear it once and you're like, damn, I was rejected. It's a rejection text. It's on your phone until you delete it. That's terrible. I don't, I don't want that. <laughs> I think it'd be good for people who are douchebaggery. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, definitely. You guys, let's wrap this up. I'm, I'm gonna um, throw in the question of the day. This question comes from Armand about dating in San Francisco. When you live at your parents' house, since housing costs are so crazy here, one, how do I bring up this topic in a mature and masculine way on the first and second? first or second date when the girls usually have nice jobs and have their own place? And two, if things progress between us, how do I navigate the logistics of going to her place or something else for privacy? I fumbled the explanation of me living at home with a few girls, leading to several rejections over text after the first date. All right, Armand, this is a, this is a great one. The, question, the first question I, I would ask is, why are you living with your parents, right? <laughs> But if, if you're living with your parents because you're saving up money to go to graduate school or something like that, I think that's something that can be, you can kind of spin that in a more positive light. If you're someone that um, you're living with your, your parents because you don't have a job and you're having a hard time finding one, I don't think you should be going out on dates just yet. I think you need Damn. to be focused, like to be honest, I think you need to focus on just getting your shit together. I'm not saying this makes you a bad or good person. I'm just saying I think there are other priorities. If you're living with your parents in San Francisco, yes, it's very expensive, but there's ways to get around it with roommates and such. So the question is really, why are you living with your parents? You need to first navigate why you're living at home first, and then, uh, oh, I don't know about that. That's a hard one. Other than like renting, a, you know, the hotels for the night, I don't. A breather? You can do breather? I think you need to be honest with the girl you're dating and then just stay at her place. Yeah, I think that's... And then when you're ready to take the step to meet the parents and all that, then you can bring her to your place, but don't do that prematurely until you're ready to make that step. If you are, you know, saving your money and acting, acting fiscally responsible and all that sort of stuff, and you meet a, a, a lady that actually appreciates that and appreciates you then the logistics should kind of work themselves out. Yep. And coming from a girl's perspective, I'm only representing myself here. I would never, ever date a guy who lived at home with his parents. But if he had a plan, like if this was not permanent, and he said, UA, you know what, I want to take you on these dates. I want to start dating you. Um, I do live at home with my parents right now, but I will be moved out in two months. I'm just saving enough money for the deposit or, you know, or whatever. Then I'm like, okay, he has a plan at least, and he can communicate that. And I can, whatever, you can stay over at my place or we can rent hotels for the next two months. If it's like a permanent thing, then that is a huge turnoff. I definitely. I have a question for you, UA. Say he's living with his parents. But the reason he's, he hasn't moved out yet is because he wants to use his money for, like, big events, like limousine rides here, like bottle service everywhere, like just crazy stuff like that. What, what are your thoughts about that? Not, and it doesn't have to be going wild and crazy drunk, but just, like, being able to do live the big life. What are your thoughts? Um, then I would say grow up. What? Uh, I don't need a bottle service. I don't need a limousine. I just need a bed without your mom walking in on us having sex. Is that too much to ask in life? I don't know. My standards are high, maybe. Like, I think legitimate reasons would be I'm saving up for a down payment on a house. I want to buy in San Francisco. Damn, okay, if you, but then you'll be living at your parents' house for the next 10 years. But at least you're trying to buy something or you're saving up for grad school, in which case I don't want to date you anyway because you're about to go to grad school. So, agree, again, I totally agree with you, Michael. Get the, get the excuses down. Uh, really be honest and upfront with why you're living at home, how much time are you allowing yourself to be at home, and do you have a plan for the future? But just be honest. Just I think honesty is the best policy in this situation. Some girls might like it. Some girls might like it. Some people are kinky. They're like, yeah, I like that. You know, your parents might walk in. Some people want to relive their high school days. You know, that's like part of their fantasy. It's great for role play. But <laughs> on that note, listeners at home, don't forget to submit your stories. And remember, you can always be anonymous. We can change your name and the names of people involved in your story. Well, right before that, I want to say thank you, Andrew, for oh, yeah. uh, taking the time on the show. And uh, stay dateable. Here's a dating fact brought to you by Lively, a new video dating app. And we have Kat from Lively here. Kat, what are some ways that people can be more successful at dating? We have some stats about um, 
what people put in their profiles and whether that leads to more or less messages. Surprisingly, profiles that mention being laid back got 50% less messages. Whoa, 50%. Yes. And on the other hand, those profiles that mentioned being ambitious didn't do well either. They resulted in 38% fewer messages. So, Kat, what's, what's someone supposed to do? Like, they can't be laid back and they can't be <laughs> ambitious? I mean, I think that, you know, people, of course, you should be laid back and you should be ambitious, but I think the takeaway here is just don't be generic. If you're online dating right now, you should be looking at what your competition looks like. Get on your friend who's an opposite sex or opposite gender. I love doing right? that. Like, <laughs> get on their profile and like swipe through their options and just see what other people who are like you, what they're writing and just don't write what they're writing. Yeah, if you, I mean, if going through dating profiles, if I see I'm laid back, I'm laid back, I'm laid back. Oh, yeah. you're so interesting. No, so just, you know, be more unique. Great takeaway. Thanks Kat and thanks Lively for that dating fact. Videos tell your story better. Download the Lively Dating app today at golivelyapp.com. To connect with us, visit datablepodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all under Datable Podcast. Mm -hmm.